Welcome to AG's Ace. Today, we speak about Sushil Kumar, aka Sushil Pehlwan, a champion wrestler who has brought great laurels for India. And look how low he has fallen today. But there is a larger story behind him, a larger story behind the sport of wrestling and the problems which is plaguing it. Let's take a close look. This is a tragic tale. It's very unfortunate that such a thing has happened in India and uh, what would be its ramifications and continuing uh, ramifications as the story unfolds. Let's take a look at Sushil Pahlwan's story and the, the larger strings which are attached to it. So, <clears throat> like I said, Sushil Pahlwan's arrest for alleged murder has already uh, dented the image of the sport in India. It has set a very poor example for young aspirants Sushil was an icon, and yet how low he has fallen. I remember uh, meeting uh, Virinder Sehwag in his early days uh, for a studio interview when he'd just become a successful cricketer. And he spoke about Sushil Kumar as one of his idols. He says, we both belong to Najafkar, and what a tremendous uh, uh, person he is, how much effort he puts in, what an example he has set. And, and sure enough, he went on to win uh, two Olympic medals, which is a record so far, and no one has matched that. He became the world champion in 2010. But after that, what has happened is very, very tragic, very, very sad. Now, many available indicators show that the sport of wrestling has got enmeshed with the mafia, which involves them in land grabbing, extortion, muscle men for business and politicians, even in drugs. And it is quite a messy story as of now. But let's begin with Sushil. So his international success trigger, triggered a revolution and created an inspirational legacy in India for the sport. Uh, he belongs to Najafgarh's Bagrola village and uh, he's our only world champion. He was crowned world champion in 2010. He was uh, awarded a Padma Shri for his efforts for the, bringing recognition to the sport. He's the only one to claim two individual Olympic medals, which is an exceptional feat. Uh, for a wrestler. Let's talk about his fall first and what's all behind it. So the information that I've gathered basically is and coming from various sources is that uh, the wrestling mafia is enmeshed in alleged disputed land deals, alleged extortion, toll booth capturing they were very involved uh, with. There were many cases of abduction, extortion, looting people at the toll by the by the muscle men till uh, the toll booths were declared open. So uh, that has moved them out of that space. So wrestling, basically, if you look at the short lifespan of a wrestler, what do they do next? So not all, but quite a few of them who do not even reach the pinnacle of the sport, they become fodder. They become uh, muscle men for businesses, for political wrangling and drug and gun peddling. There have been arrests, there have been murders, there have been cases registered by the police in this country. And uh, so this is not hearsay. Now, what triggers the desire for them to move on to do such kind of things is the lore of the good life. They like to travel in flashy SUVs. They would like to wear expensive clothes, watches, accessories. And they want to basically convey that they are having a good time in life. Uh, most of the uh, men who have retired from the sport are in their early 30s. So that's that's a pretty young age to be in. And that is the time when they want to flaunt their wealth. So if you want that kind of life, then the ordinary jobs will not pay for it. That's a given. So even if the if the government, like it provided a, a job to Sushil Kumar, that's, that's not going to pay for what his aspirations may have been and uh, of his ilk. So that's a truism. Now, lack of a secure future also haunts them. What do they do next? That's a very, very big question mark which confronts them. There is uh, already poor education behind most of them. So uh, after the grueling training, uh, the uh, sport that they are uh, indulging in, there are injuries. So there could be an early exit. What do they do then? So this is not cricket where uh, a young player plays international cricket for a couple of years and, you, and the person is very secure for the rest of his life. This is not the case in wrestling. And let's be realistic again about that, which doesn't mean that you become a hood. But unfortunately, that is what is happening. Now, 
Gang rivalry is also leading to murders, which is already happening. You know, in case of Sushil Kumar, again, he hammered a guy for close to 15 minutes, going by various police uh, accounts coming in, and the guy got hit in the head. He died. So he, he was also like a, a national level wrestler, but hanging around with, with a, a top level criminal who has 15 to 16 murder cases against him, extortion cases and what have you, links uh, with uh, the underworld overseas. So which is already out in the press. So I don't want to go on uh, hammering that point, but see a man is judged by the company he keeps. It just shows the mentality. It just shows the need of these uh, wrestlers to hang around with such people ostensibly for one thing, hard cash. Let's not forget that. Now, I want to just deviate a bit quickly uh, because I've done a lot of, uh, uh, it's a passion with me. So I've read a lot about uh, the rap industry as it evolved in the United States. And uh, two of my favorites um, both got killed uh, very early in life between the age of 23 and 25. One was Biggie Small. Uh, and the other one was the one and only Tupac Shakur, who is, whose legacy, in fact, both their legacies are still very, very evident. Possibly Tupac might be a bigger name. There have been movies made on them, but I want to just take you quickly back to what they were. So both came, uh, one came from the Bronx, the other one, uh, uh, one was from the West Coast, the other one was from the East Coast. They didn't have uh, much of a childhood, poverty didn't, never had much of an education. Uh, one was selling drugs. In fact, the other also uh, was reported to have uh, sold drugs, got involved with the mafia, got involved with the, with gangs, and then they, they moved on uh, because of their gift for rap music. They moved on to become very, very big uh, superstars in their lifetime, a very short and truncated one. Now, the thing is that if you talk about uh, rap and their rivalry in the East Coast versus the West Coast, what does it say? Uh, there is a loose comparison between sport and music. So while they became superstars, they wanted to have uh, big labels, uh, record labels attached to their name. They wanted a flashy life. They wanted to stay in villas. They wanted to move around in SUVs, the big cars, the, the big bucks. Uh, you know, they wanted to have uh, perfumes, uh, uh, labels named after them, clothes, and what have you, shoes. So it, it wasn't enough for, uh, it is basically ambition. So it, it wasn't enough for them to be just superstars in the music industry. They wanted to become fashion labels. They wanted to become massive brands. And that never happened because of gang rivalry. Both, both got knocked off. So if you take that and extrapolate it into the wrestling circuit in India, you might find a few parallels and it's worth pondering over as more and more facts come out. Now, coming back to India, what is the Wrestling Federation of India doing? So the WFI is concerned that the good reputation built over the years with stupendous international performances, many of them given by Sushil himself, has been ruined. So that, again, is a fact. Now to quote WFI Assistant Secretary Vinod Tomar, he says, yes, I must say that the image of Indian wrestling has got hurt badly by this. <clears throat> but we have nothing to do with what wrestlers do away from the mat. We are concerned with their on mat performance. Please remember this line. We are concerned with their on mat performance. So over and above, the WFI cannot take uh, any cognizance of what they are doing. If they go uh, off kilter, if they stray, that's for the cops to handle. So that is where the um, responsibility begins and ends. And that's not a very happy situation, according to me, because there you cannot say that uh, we are only concerned with their on mat performance and the rest can go to hell. And that's exactly what is hap happening currently. Um, back to Sushil, what did Sushil do? His bronze medal at the 2008 Beijing Olympics ended India's 56 year long wait for an Olympic medal in wrestling. So after 56 years, Sushil won a bronze medal in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Uh, this achievement, it had a tremendous impact uh, in Indian wrestling with the rise of names like Yogeshwar Dutt, Geeta and Babita Pogat. Movies have been made on them, their cousin Vinesh Pogat, Rio bronze medalist Sakshi Malik, and world medalist Bajran Punia, Ravi Dahiya, and Deepak Punia after that. So it's been a line of uh, young talent coming in who aspire to want to do more and more. Is Sushil Kumar their only hero? Well, that's a point to ponder over. Now, again, cut to the present. Tokyo Olympics is barely uh, less than two months away. And for the first time, where Indian wrestling is concerned, we have the highest number of quotas, eight for the Olympics. And just before the Olympics, while they are preparing, this is what happens. Uh, in the, uh, 
to to wrestling through Sushil's arrest, and and what a tragic incident this is. Um, let's talk about. There was one more incident uh, which happened in wrestling, and that was uh, the WFI official referred to coach Sukhinder Moore's involvement in the alleged murder of five people, including a fellow coach Manoj Malik in Jat College in Rohtak district of Haryana. Sukhinder had allegedly gunned down five people due to his personal enmity with Malik and was arrested from New Delhi in a joint operation by the Delhi and Haryana police. So it, it's, it sends a clear signal as to where the sport is heading and what are the kind of people who are involved in it. Now, the uh, WFI was asked if they will remove Sushil from the annual contract list. And Tomer said then that they were not mulling any such move as of now. Sushil was handed an A-grade contract in December 2018, along with four others, for an annual support of 30 lakh rupees. And fair to say that Sushil has not participated in any international event since his first round defeat in the 2019 World Championship in Nur Sultan. Another point to be remembered here is that the video which was uh, taken by Sushil's friend of him uh, allegedly beating this guy to death, uh, which he has uh, obviously denied, but that video is in possession of the police and he is in custody, uh, in their custody and he's being interrogated. Now, the, the place that was uh, their home, which was the, uh, the Chhatrasal Stadium in New Delhi, that has been tarnished very, very poorly. It has taken a massive beating. Um, after Sushil Kumar, Yogeshwar, Bajrang, and uh, uh, Tokyo bound Ravi Dahiya and Deepak Punia have uh, all uh, trained there at some point or the other. Now, many of them have left the uh, Chhatrasal Stadium after this arrest, and also some left before. And that is because they feel, and this is an allegation, they were targeted by Sushil's camp for not towing the line. The 1982 Asian Games champion Satpal Singh, Sushil's coach and father-in-law, was in charge of the stadium till 2016 before he retired as additional director. After that, Sushil was appointed an OSD, and it is believed that the move was aimed at keeping the stadium in the tight grip of the family. In 2016, when WFI had chosen Narsingh Pancham Yadav, to represent India at the Rio Games, he later failed a dope test and he alleged that basically Sushil and uh, his camp followers spiked his food. That is an allegation which has not been proven, but it was a serious allegation. Now, another very interesting aspect is that during the 2018 Commonwealth Games trials, when Sushil beat Praveen Rana in the final, the supporters of the two camps, they went berserk and they beat each other up outside the stadium. And it was a clear cut case of uh, basically sending a message that don't take Sushil Kumar on. There were also cases that during the trials, many did not even want to compete with him. They came and touched his feet, took his blessings and said, Guruji, aap hi sab kuch hai, and they left. Now, this is not how trials should be conducted, but it, it did happen. Um, the bad news for Sushil is that there is a possibility that the Makoka Act uh, may be uh, imposed against him. So this is basically the Maharashtra Control of Organized Crime Act, uh, which is called the Makoka Act, usually used against um, very heinous crimes against terrorists and stuff like that, hardened criminals. So if that is invoked against him, then what lies in store for him basically is that he will not be able to get bail easily. In addition, there is a prop, there is a provision of life imprisonment after Makoka, serving as a huge blow for Sushil in this con in this context. Invested, investigative agencies can file a charge sheet for up to six months under the Act. It is also believed, and uh, we may as well bring that up now, that Sushil was in alleged contact with gangsters such as Kala Jathedi and Neeraj Bhavana. Uh, Kala Jathedi is supposed to operate out of du Dubai, and uh, there is this gang rivalry going on between him and the other people. One of the uh, gents who was beaten up allegedly by Sushil, called Sonu Mahal, is supposedly... Uh, a relative of Kala Jateri who has sworn revenge. So many uh, people anticipate that this is just the beginning. There might be other hits too. So we'll have to wait and see and see what the cops can do. Um, I more or less said uh, most of what I had to towards the end wrapping things up. I believe that the Wrestling Federation cannot just look away. You cannot say that we are we restrict ourselves to the on-mat performance because there, there is hell to pay for. 
people knew chhatrasal stadium was being misused but nothing was done do wrestlers past their prime have no future except working with goons gangsters and extortionists this is a question we need to ask ourselves being in society if that is the reality then the wrestling federation and the sports ministry need to have a very close look at the sport and find solutions a way out could be providing jobs mentoring encouraging them to lead a clean life but of course like i said earlier if they are obsessed with flashy suvs which can go up to almost a crore um with their lifestyles staying in big hotels wearing clothes watches what have you then well simple jobs uh, may not be the answer it depends on uh, their aspirations how they are mentored what kind of education they have family support etc etc last point Sushil Pehlwan's fall is a very, very big fall for the sport. I believe here is a man with two Olympic medals, a government job, and a Padma Shri, an icon, who people looked up to, who encouraged an entire generation of wrestlers to come up, who even a, a Viru Sehwag said was his hero, was his idol, was his brother. See how low he has fallen, and what a sad, sad story this is. There's a lot to learn, and we need to keep track of this. Thanks for watching, AGZ.